we have a very few days of the moon challenge left. I hope you are still waking up early and catching the moon at dawn. Looking at the moon is becoming more and more challenging as we come to day 25. We have a thin waning crescent moon with about 25% illuminated surface. It is now dim enough that you may not really be able to see it after the sun rises and becomes bright. So the best time to watch it is early in the twilight before sunrise. This would also give you beautiful photo opportunities of the lovely crescent hanging on the eastern horizon with the beautiful twilight colors coming. It will still be your compass because with the crescent pointed towards the sun, you will know exactly where the east is and where the sun is located. Of course, it's not so difficult, but you may want to compare this with a similar picture we had shown earlier in the series where the lighted part of the moon's crescent was pointing to the sun, but then the sun was in the west. Isn't it fun to see all these changes happening over just this small period of a moon cycle? Here's a better picture of the same view taken by Prabhu with the moon's crescent pointing towards the east in the earth sky. Given this amazingly detailed image, let's look at some of the features that we will be bidding goodbye to on the next day. So looking north, of course, we have the edge of the Mare Frigoris coming up. This feature has been with us almost all through the challenge because it is a plain area which lies horizontally along the whole area of the moon. Of course, the next day, we'll also be bidding goodbye to the Bay of Rainbows, the Sinus Iridum. This lovely arch has been with us for 15 days now and has been quite an interesting adornment to the Mare Imbrium. We will miss this and other features around the north area of the moon. For example, the crater Pythagoras, which is quite prominent in this picture. In the south, we'll be missing out on the Carpathian Mountains, which were very close to the Copernicus crater. We do still have a good look at the Kepler Ray crater, but it may be missing on the next day as the terminator moves rapidly along the moon's surface. One particularly prominent feature that, that we will be bidding goodbye to is the crater Tobias Mayer, which is right at the end of the Carpathian Mountains. Now, I like to point out to small craters, which are named after important modern contributors to science and astronomy. Do you know that Tobias Mayer was the first person to make a complete, big and accurate map of the moon? He had used very accurate instruments to make a moon map, which was seven and a half inches across and had accuracy to about 1 60th of a degree on the moon's surface. And let me tell you, all this was in the late 1700s with access to very small telescopes. So we have various opportunities now with our modern instruments. As we go south, we'll be missing out on certain portions of the ocean of storms. We'll also miss certain portions of the sea of moisture, which is the Mare Humorum. Fading away into the shadows at the edge of the terminator on this day is our old friend Landsberg. You may remember this as the crater which has the equator passing through it. Just below that is the Rifeus mountain range and it will also go missing in the shadows on the next day. Further south, we have right next to the horribly named Marsh of Diseases or Palace Epidemiarum, the crater Mercator. Again, this is a small crater which will go missing in the shadows on day 26 but it is named after an important contributor to the science of map making, which is also called cartography. Gerardus Mercator was a Dutch cartographer and in the 16th century, he made a projection system for making maps, which is still being followed in the nautical maps. You may have actually seen and used his projection system in the Atlas of the Earth in your school. The use of cartographic projection systems was very helpful for people in making detailed maps of not just the Earth, but also of the Moon. You may find several Mercator projection maps on the internet which show you the southern part of the Moon in a much better way. Further down, we'll be missing the two elongated craters, Heinzel and Schiller. 
These have also been with us for a while, but now the Terminator Shadow will probably cover Heinzel and part of Schiller on the next day. The crescent on day 26 is going to be even more difficult. If you do not wake up in time, you may just miss it. So we hope you catch it and also share your experiences with us on the Moon Challenge. If you miss the moon though, we'll be right here waiting for you with more details and more pictures of the next day's moon. So join us again in the next episode.